Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have three subwoofers in for review. They are all eight inch models, $500 or cheaper. And hopefully we're gonna find one that is right for you. If you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume you've watched the individual reviews for each one of these subwoofers. I will link them in the comments in case you haven't. If you haven't, please go back and watch them. It's really important. This subwoofer was reviewed um, with the Airmotive B1 Plus speakers, the first half of the reviews, the speaker. So if you wanna just fast forward to the second half, you'll catch the review for the subwoofer. Um, so we're gonna just kind of go through them and my goal here is to help you stop obsessing on what to buy and just kind of pick something, right? Um, one is not better than the other. This isn't really a shootout because these three are really, really different. I enjoyed my time with all three of them. Um, they all had some really, really good pros and they all had some cons, which is understandable at this price point. And given the small size of all three of these, these again, they're eight inch models. Starting with the Bowers and Wilkins, it's $500. It's got a single active driver. There's no passive radiator or anything like that. And it's got the least amount of power at only, I'm guessing, 100 watts RMS. They publish a 200 peak figure, but not an RMS figure. So I'll just guess it's 100 watts, which is just cutting the peak figure in half. That's typically how Class D amplifiers work, but not always. Anyways, that's what you get out of this. With the Aperion Bravis 8D, you get 300 watts RMS at $400, and it has one active down-firing driver and two passive radiators, one on each side. With the Emotiva S8, which is only $299, you get one active down-firing driver and one passive front-firing radiator. So they're kind of organized in price from most expensive to cheapest, so let's talk about the Bowers & Wilkins. The most expensive and the least amount of power. That sounds kind of crappy, uh, you know, initially, right? But subwoofers, you know, they give and they take. There's kind of a trade-off a lot of the time, especially in the lower price category. So what are we getting for that $500? We're getting some pretty killer articulation, okay? Like the different sounds between like a bass guitar, a kick drum, or electronic bass from an EDM song. It is so distinct and clear. The sound quality of this subwoofer is truly the best out of the three. And no surprise, it's Bowers and Wilkins, right? Like most of their stuff is fairly expensive. This is one of the cheapest items they make. Um, and I, I gotta say, I, I had a lot of respect for this thing when I heard it. It really, really, really impressed the hell out of me with its sound quality. Its speed, agility, and control are also the best of the group. Being a sealed only design without any passive radiators, it's just gonna be the quickest by design. Um, it's not gonna play the loudest, unfortunately, because again, it's gonna be limited in power. 100 watts over here. This one's got three times as much. This one's got two times as much. That's a big deal, right? We're not talking about the difference between 800 watts and 900 watts, right? 100 watts isn't a big deal between 800 and 900. But when it's 100 and 200 or 100 and 300, it's a big deal. Anyway, I digress. Some other things this is good at, um, it gets low. It truly is a full range subwoofer despite being the smallest of the group. Now, it's Volume output at those, those lowest frequencies isn't the best because it's limited on power, obviously the size. Um, so if you try to really crank your volume, it might flutter a little bit or run out of steam. Now, there is a switch on the back with three positions, A, B, and C, and that's for bass roll off. If you like to listen to your music louder, you can put it in a B position. If you like to listen to your music even louder, you can put it in the C position, and that rolls off a low frequency bass a little more and a little more so that it doesn't run out of steam as easily. It's really cool that they added that because you will run out of steam with just 100 watts without using that switch if you play your music above 75 dB. Some songs even at around 75 dB did cause this to run out of steam, but it was not very common at all. A song by like Young Jeezy, for example, called Put On has a stupid amount of low frequency bass in the beginning and it caused this to flutter. Now in the B position of the bass roll off, it didn't do that, but then it lost its low end extension that was better than the other two. So it's a give and take. Um, I would say that about wraps it up for this. Ultimately, what you wanna take away, the TLDR on this bad boy is sound quality, sound quality, sound quality. If you're willing to give up your loud volume base for sound quality, this is your ticket. Now, at $100 cheaper and triple the power, the Aperion Bravis 8D, the best looking of the bunch, no doubt. This one's made out of HDF instead of MDF like these two. Not a huge deal, but it's worth noting because HDF is, is a denser wood. It's the heaviest at 30 pounds. Very scientific knock test, but I'll be honest, they all sound good. Anyway, so the Bravis 8D is gonna be a pretty good subwoofer as well. It's gonna have the most output 
volume wise, it's got 300 watts RMS. That's three times the Bowers and Wilkins and 100 watts more than the Emotiva. So if you've got a bigger space, this is just your ticket, you know, that's it. Um, its speed, agility, and control are not gonna be as good as the Bowers and Wilkins and not gonna be as good as the Emotiva either. Now, its speed, agility, and control are not bad. Just these two are a little bit better with this one being the best in that category. Now, well, let me look at my notes real quick here. There's one other thing, ah, articulation. The same can be said for its articulation. The Emotiva has slightly better articulation. The Bowers and Wilkins articulation is quite a bit better. Because again, for Bowers and Wilkins, that's kind of the name of the game. Sound quality, sound quality, sound quality. Aperion audio being more of, I'd say on the home theater side of things, no surprise, their low frequency extension is kick-ass given its size. Um, this thing can get low and it can play loud at those low frequencies, which is killer. I would say it's low frequency volume and output is the best of the three. If you've got to fill a medium size room or even a bigger room and you're limited on, you know, space for a sub and you've decided on an eight inch and you're just, you can't step up in size, this is going to give you that room filling base. Additionally, having the dual passive radiators, one on each side, I told you guys, I can't hold this position for long is gonna kind of create a pseudo like dual sub effect where you're gonna have just a little bit better um, kind of a base presentation throughout the room. Just regardless of where you're sitting, there's gonna be a good amount of base kind of everywhere. Um, I don't know if that's 100% from the dual passive radiators. That's what my brain tells me. I could be wrong. I don't know a whole lot about standing waves and shit like that, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, this does also have a USB output of five volt. So if you wanna do like a wireless adapter to this, you could do that. The other two don't have the USB five volt. Trying to see if there's any other major like differences on the back here. They all have high level inputs, low level inputs. Um, yeah, they're, they're all similar enough that there's nothing like too much worth mentioning. Um, so let's hop over to the cheapest of the group. I know most of you guys are hoping this one's for you. You're hoping whatever I say about this one is for you because we all like to save money and I relate. I get that. So $299, it's got 200 watts RMS. So it's right in the middle in terms of power. Um, it's kick-ass, I'm not gonna lie. It is really, really good. Um, it's not gonna have the speed and articulation of the Bowers and Wilkins, but it will have more speed articulation and control than the Bravis 8D. So it's kind of in the middle in terms of that. It's low end, like the ultra low end, like the Young Jeezy song put on I'm talking about. Unfortunately, that's where this one is gonna fall behind. It does have a built-in limiter, however, which will allow it to play at very loud volumes. So even though it has 100 watts less, than the Bravis 8D, it can also play very, very loud, much louder than the Bowers and Wilkins can, because again, it does have double the power of the Bowers and Wilkins. Some other areas where this is good are gonna be, I keep forgetting the words I've written down here, articulation. Its articulation is also better than the Bravis 8D, not as good as the Bowers and Wilkins ASW 608. In many areas, the Emotiva is kind of right in the middle of the two, which isn't a bad place to be considering it's the cheapest of the three. Some areas where it's really kick ass is impact. When bass comes in out of nowhere, whether it's in a song or in a movie, it kind of surprises you a little bit. The bass really comes out of nowhere and that's the agility that I'm talking about, that this is a little bit not as good. Now again, remember, the agility and control of the Bravis 8D is not bad, only comparatively to these other two models. And it makes sense why. This only has one passive radiator, this has two, this has none, right? The sealed traditional design is gonna be the most agile. Anyways, back to the Emotiva. Um, I, I dig it, I do. Uh, at $300, you can't go wrong. If, that, if that's like your budget and you don't have more for the other two, just like get this, don't even worry about it. Um, let's talk about uh, warranties and things like that and in-home trials. So over here, you get a five-year warranty on everything with a 30-day in-home trial. Over here, you get a 60-day in-home trial. You get a 10-year warranty on the cabinet and on the driver, a two-year warranty on the amplifier. Over here, um, you don't get any in-home trial, but if you buy it from Crutchfield, they have a 60-day return period, you can maybe try that. And the warranty on this bad boy is only two years, which is the least, but there's still a warranty. So at the end of the day here, we do have three really good subwoofers. If I was pressed to choose one, I might have a little bit of a hard time because I am spoiled now, right? The subwoofer I use costs $1,000 or more now, and I'm not used to having to kind of pick something and give up something else. Now all subwoofers give and take a little bit, but the more expensive they get, the more you kind of have it all, right? Yeah, I can't pick one. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm just, I'm too spoiled. There's something I like about all of them. Like when I'm listening to my Silverline Minuets paired with the Bowers and Wilkins, like 
It sounds so good because the minuets don't have much bass of their own. I have to rely on the Bowers and Wilkins sub and I have to turn up the frequency at quite high to blend with the speakers and the agility and tonality of this is just so good for music. I really, really enjoy it. If I'm listening to my Bucart S400s and I want them to sound like they're three times their size, this does that for me. Um, it pairs with them so well and it, I mean, and it's, it's, I'll be honest, like it's just so good looking, right? Like most subwoofers just don't look this good. Um, if I want that loud output, like this just delivers it. Like if we were talking about a sealed sub over here and a ported sub over here, this kind of lands like right in the middle in its performance. Then like the Emotiva, like with movies, I kind of like enjoyed it the most. I don't listen at the loudest volumes. If I did, I'd probably like the Aperion more, but my ears are pretty sensitive. I'm not saying they're good, just sensitive. And so I listen about 75 dB, that's the average. Anytime I pull out my dB meter, whether it's music, my Xbox, or like video games, no, it's the Xbox. Music, movies, or the Xbox, I'm always at 75 dB. So the impact of this, like, I'll, I'll be honest, like I did my best to recreate it when I set up the other two because it was so, so impressive. I was watching uh, the Star Trek Picard show and every time a ship came in and out of warp, this thing like just really did something magical. I mean, these two made bass too, don't get me wrong, but the impact of this when that bass comes on out of nowhere is really its strong point. And arguably the price is a, a quite appealing factor at only $299, but hey, pick your poison, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, there's no perfect subwoofer, but there might be a perfect one for you. And if it's one of these three and I've helped you stop obsessing and make a decision, that would make me very happy. So leave a comment and let me know if this video helped you make a decision. If you have any questions or you're still a little confused on which one might be right for you, feel free to you know drop a comment, send me an email, my about section lists my email and we'll chat and I'll do my best to help you. You know what I mean? For compar not for, compar for comparison's sake, but uh, for those of you that know my channel a little bit better and know that I normally use the SVS SB3000, if you're wondering why I'm not talking about this one in this review or how it compares, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's a 13 inch driver. It's got 800 watts RMS. It's got like 2000 watts of peak power or more. Um, it's $1,100. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot heavier. It just doesn't make sense. It's not an eight inch. This is an eight inch subwoofer video. Okay. So thanks for tuning in until next time guys. Later.